what is up you guys welcome back to the channel let's see did i get it right this time i think that i got it right this time i think i did i think somehow i managed to nail it and um and uh that that that, that i unmuted the microphone and did all the things i don't know how i figured that one out but i did so um how's everybody doing today it is fantastic to be here with you guys. I've had a bit of a crummy, 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 crummy week. Can I say crummy? It really wasn't a bad week at all. Um, I just had a lot going on. Let's start this back over there. Let's do that. Um, so I apologize uh, for not streaming Friday, like I said, but then releasing the video Saturday morning. I do apologize for that. Um, so long story short, so I've had a bunch of last minute meetings going on um, that I, I just could not get out of. And then Tuesday, I found out that I was going to have to fly to Pennsylvania, which I was not I mean, I was fine. I was fine doing it. Um, it was just kind of a last minute type of a thing. Um, and so I had to fly. I had to fly from here to Charlotte, Charlotte to Pennsylvania, be in a meeting for three or four hours, and then fly back to Charlotte, back to Columbia, and get home all in the same day. And it was just, a, it was a whole thing, man. Um, but like I said, that was some other meetings going on, some other stuff going on. And to top all that off, I'm starting to feel a little bit under the weather, which sucks. I feel pretty crappy. Um, so bear with me. I'm going to do the very best I can uh, today. We're going to we're going to try to we're going to try to make something interesting happen. Uh, but I don't I don't know what that's going to be yet, but we're going to try to make something happen. Um, give me just one second because I'm adding I'm adding a camera to the so I, in all of these meetings that I had, they were all Zoom meetings, and I used um, OBS through Teams. Uh, I used OBS's virtual camera thing through Teams, which was fantastic, because it gave me a lot of functionality I would normally have, um, with bouncing between microphones and stuff like that, which, like I said, was great. It was great. But um, I ended up somehow deleting my entire profile. So none of my cameras are set up right. The color's probably all off. The audio's probably messed up. Um, and when I went to save it, for some reason it didn't quite save right, because I don't know, it didn't. But, um, so I had to rebuild everything again, and I still don't think I got all the color nailed, but we're gonna run with it anyway. So today, also, um, let me switch over to this guy. So back over there, I finally put the big tent up around the um, around the 3D printer. So I did that, which is awesome. Um, I just had to, it was too big, and so I had to cut it down, and it's still too big, and I still kind of don't like it at all. But I'm going to try it for a couple of things and see how it works. If it works great, we'll keep using it. If it doesn't, then we won't, you know. That's the whole thing. Um, so a little bit of, uh, of, of another, of an aside to that. Um, the wife had some friends come over yesterday and one of the friends, excuse my messy floor, by the way, in the background. I, it's been a, it's been a, it's been a past couple of days. I'm sorry, all right? It just, it's been what it's been. Anyway, so one of her friends that came over brought her daughter um, and her daughter had actually never played any video games and was pretty fascinated by all of them. And so I got to walk her down through my collection of stuff. She was pretty interested in it, or at least she faked it well being a teenager. Um, but uh, so I walked her through all the consoles and where they all came from and, you know, how old they were and all that stuff. And um, she wanted to play one of the little, uh, one of my little micro consoles or micro games, micro arcade, the Oregon Trail. Um, and I tried to tell her she didn't really want to play it, but she did. She thought it looked cool. So she wanted to play that. Um, so I had to charge it up, um, but uh, at any rate, like I said, she'd never really played any video games before in her life, so um, I let her check out a few. She she seemed to really, really, really enjoy Mario Kart, which was great. Um, she didn't get to stay and play real long, but maybe she'll come over and hang out at some point and get to, get to uh, play that. And the reason I bring it up is, so 
and I say this all the time, I do, I say it all the time in my videos and everything else, you know, there is a special connection made, you know, from, with a gamer for some reason, I don't know, it's, it's hardwired into us, where we remember that first time playing Mario or Sonic or, you know, Jet Set Radio Future or Forza or Gran Turismo or Tomb Raider or whatever, right? And that's a very strong memory for us um and so and so when she came over you know she wanted to play some stuff which was really cool um and she got to play mario kart and you know i think we overlook as a as a as a as a group of people um i think we overlook that right a lot um that this you know how how special that moment is you know this is somebody's first time she seemed to really enjoy herself and so i was glad to be able to let her play my switch and play Mario Kart and it was great. She had a great time. Um, maybe I, maybe she will grow up to be a gamer one day, who knows? And maybe, you know, it will all be my fault, uh, which would be pretty cool. So at any rate, all right, let's get into this. So um, this PlayStation, this one, this PlayStation right here, um, this was the other one um, and it's filthy and dirty and I would have already cleaned it except for I didn't. Um, I would have already done it though, except for I didn't. Um, but uh, this was the other PlayStation uh, that I gotten in a bundle not too long ago. This one is the one we looked at first. That was the uh, SCPH 9001. This, I thought was thinking it was 7000, a 9000 series console. Um, and I can already tell you. It is significantly dirty. And if we look at the bottom, I'd have to, I'll have to reach over there and get it. So the foot, the feet, the feetsies are different. And also this one, other than just being dirty, like the, you have to really slam it to get it to close. So I'm gonna show you guys how to fix that uh, first because that is garbage. We're gonna take a look at this console on the inside before we fire it up because of all the dirt and everything else going on. Um, and with any, with any vintage slash retro slash whatever console, um, you always, before you fire it up, especially if you get it in the mail from somebody or you picked it up at a flea market or whatever, you always, 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 always wanna open it up. The very first thing you do um, and just make sure, you know, first and foremost, there's no buggies living living inside of it. And, you know, there's no water damage or there's no leak caps anywhere that are gonna uh, ruin your day. Uh, now, this is gonna be significantly different inside than the uh, 5000 series console that we've got over there. The 5000 ones, if you're into uh, PlayStations or you're wanting to mod them, the 5000s are the ones that you actually want. The 5000s and earlier, and as, as an aside note, and he hasn't shown up yet, but uh, my buddy, the anime guy uh, on the Twitterverse, uh, and he's got a YouTube channel as well. I've got to get a link. I've got to get a link to that. Um, matter of fact, let me, let, me go, let me go right now. Let me go pull it right now. Um, and I'll see if I can't put it on stream for you. Oh, let me find it. Uh, let me find it. It's easier for me to find it with, um, I'll probably end up having to go to his, I've got, I, I've got my list is so long over here, it's insane. I'm probably gonna have to go to the Twitterverse and then go and find him. Retro Dicky, by the way, huge cool guy. Retro Brew is also a huge cool guy. Both of those guys uh, retweeted and all that stuff, which is great. All right, let me pull it up this way. There we go. And then I will, I will, I will open this up here. And we are going to transition over. Voila, here you go. Never mind all my tabs open. So this is this is Brandon the anime guy, right? Um, very cool guy. Um, I don't know why that's why, because I'm not 
I'm not subscribed on my uh, classic console repairs site. I'm sorry, uh, I really am. So he does a lot of cool stuff with anime and he usually pops in and says hi uh, in my videos and whatnot. But uh, this is him right here. It's Brandon the Anime Guy. It's youtube.com slash C slash Brandon the Anime Guy. That is his, uh, that is his YouTube channel right there. And he's got, I mean, just an absolute ton of videos. Um, does a lot of cool stuff with anime. Again, I'm not super like super into um, anime. That's not really my uh, my deal. Um, but he is, and he does he does some great stuff with it. He really does. So you know, definitely if you get the chance, swing on over, say hi to him. Um, I'm gonna send him a message right now just because I can. Um, Maybe he'll swing in. He did get a he did get a really cool PlayStation in the other day. Uh, it's a 1000 series, uh, which is which would be the the first of them. Uh, that was man, it looks fantastic. It's a SCPH 1001, um, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, great looking console. Maybe he'll maybe he'll send it over and we'll. Uh, We'll, uh, we'll give it a look. So yeah, at any rate, yeah, I, de I wanted to, uh, like I said, I wanted to, I wanted to give him a shout out. He's always so cool and um, swings by and says hi and everything. So at any rate, yeah. So back to what we were doing. What were we doing? We were working on this PlayStation cause, cause it ain't gonna fix itself. That's why, cause it ain't gonna fix itself. Um, none of these consoles fix themselves, which to be honest is kind of BS. You know, they should kind of fix themselves. Then, then, then I would have to do it, but you know, whatever. All right, let's see if we can get this guy open. He's a little bit sticky and tight, hard to get apart. Oh, that's not good. Okay, so, right off the bat, we've got a lot of dirt and dust and debris inside of it um, that was some sort of critter we've got some pet hair inside um, our lens doesn't look bad uh, hmm. so I, I wish that I had pictures of the 5000 up I want to check the fuse while I'm sitting here doing this too because, which you guys won't be able to hear my little thing buzzing, but okay, fuse is fine. So I tell you what, first thing that I want to do is I want to fix this drawer over or this this door over here. So let me set this thing over here, and we're gonna take a look at. Normally I would clean this. Normally I would clean it would would go through more detail in cleaning it. But, yeah. Okay, so let me show you how you do this guy right, right quick. Let me make sure the mobile camera is over here. I'm gonna try to make sure he's pointed down. Okay, so you so we got two screws and a spring, okay? So we're gonna pull this screw and we're gonna hold down with your hands while you remove the second screw. And you wanna remove the screws first. There's a reason for that. Uh, and then you're gonna get your tweezers, okay? And we're gonna unhook the front edge of this only and release it, okay? And then take him out. So the screw, these two screws that hold it in, and this goes over this post that's right here that, that lets us slide, okay? This spring you only want to remove this side. Take, if you're going to clean it, take the, take the whole thing off, but we're not really going to go through that. Um, we're just going to clean this with a brush and some rubbing alcohol. And then you've got this inside piece. And then we've got our push button, right? So the push button has these two little tabs. Push them together and take you something pointy. And he will drop right out. 
okay? Just like that, right? So if you look at this, um, which you'll have a better view at, at the mobile cam up there uh, in the upper left-hand corner. So this side, right, this pin right here is angled, okay? The center pin is angled, and it's angled like that for a reason because it's supposed to guide along this edge right here. That's what, that's what allows us to push open and close. So the first thing that you, the first problem that you have with these is, um, if you can see down inside of here, we get dirty, right? So the first thing that we want to do is take some rubbing alcohol, some isopropyl, 99%. We're going to clean this up. Make sure all of our gunk is out of here because gunk inside of this will actually make it not, will make it kind of catch, right? And so first thing that we do, obviously, like I said, is we're gonna clean that up. Some more rubbing alcohol down in there. And then we're gonna take our paper towel, and dry it, okay? And we're gonna flip, oh, sorry about that. We're gonna flip this guy over, okay? And we're gonna do the same thing right in here, this whole area. Um, this doesn't have to be, like normally we would take this apart and put it all in the washer, which, you know, and I say the washer, the, the, the sinks and scrub it and all that, which we can certainly do. And I probably will do that anyway, but this is a good time. This is an excellent time for me to show you guys um, how to make these adjustments yourself. Okay, so we got another part we're gonna have to look at in a minute. I'm just gonna set this down here and we're gonna work on these little mechanisms right here. So we're just gonna coat them in isopropyl, go after them, clean all the gunk out of them and off of them, all the gunks. And then we're gonna do the same thing with our button. Now, I'm doing the inside of this, but the inside of it doesn't need to be done. It's this edge. The reason I start on the inside is because it makes a nice little cup for me to pour isopropyl into. So that I can pull out what I need. Then we're just gonna wipe them down. And then I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you this one, and then we're gonna do the last little piece, and then I'm gonna show you a trick. A special little trick. So this is our mechanism where the actual tray, I don't know if you guys can see the marks on it, probably not, but there's little slide marks you'll be able to see where the plastic is shiny. Um, that's the side that you want to clean most importantly. The, the rest of it's fine, but this is the side that actually slides. Okay, that's the part you actually want to um, make sure you get good and clean. Okay, and take this, wipe him down. The other side is okay, we're gonna leave him for now. We are not gonna lose the position of our spring. He goes like that. We're gonna set these aside because there's one, uh, two other things we have to do on this. Um, we've got our gear mechanism that allows it to freely rotate and then we've got this push pin now, these push pins are notorious for being sticky so we're going to push him down squeeze the little flat tabs together shove him on out he can be a little bit of a fight sometimes so be patient so this little push pin drops on the inside and he slots in this hole and he comes out like that right there, okay? So we wanna make sure that we look, and you guys are not gonna be able to see it, but if you can, I'm trying to get a shot. This little hole right down in here, we're gonna to wanna to clean this and we're gonna to wanna to clean our pen really well, okay?
okay? And then we're gonna take our little pin. So this is what pushes down uh, on our board that tells the disk drive that it's closed. Um, this, is, this is the cheat mechanism, so, so to speak. And I say the cheat mechanism, you can hold this guy down um, and it will, it will allow the disk to run with the door open. And then you just line him back up and drop him back in, nothing to it. Voila. And now, you guys can see, free and easy, right? Just the way we want it. So, the only other thing that I'm gonna recommend that we do, if I can find it, give me one second, just wait. Ah, perfect. This is Liberty Clock Oil, okay? Synthetic loop, all right? I want two drops, no more, no less. And I wanna put them, one right in the middle on this gear, and one right there on that gear. Now it will, it is, it is synthetic lube, so it will last forever. It's one drop, and I'm gonna run it back and forth a bunch of times to distribute that lube. Okay, if you see that it's not spreading, just keep running it. We're not trying to, uh, we're not trying to apply grease. We're just putting a little bit of lube on it, and that little bit of lube will apply or will uh, protect that plastic. If you run into a part where it doesn't seem to be traveling, don't be afraid to use a little bit more, just another drop or two, you don't need a bunch. This stuff being clock oil is designed to kind of stick to gears. So I'm just running them back and forth just like that right there. That'll keep that mechanism working nice and smooth for us. Now, we're gonna take our push pin, and this is keyed so it will only go back in one, one direction, okay? It's got a little slot right in here, all right? So only go in one way. Now, we're gonna take our slide mechanism, that's this guy, we're gonna put one more tiny little drop of lube on this little angled section right here. And then we're gonna use our pin and just lube it a little bit. Take us our little paper towel, blot it. We don't want too much extra, just a little bit. We're gonna drop him, set him back down where he goes, which he's gonna drop right in this little hole and slide, just like that. Now, we're gonna take our upper tray piece, okay? We're gonna put one drop here where we see the where we see the slide mechanism. And then I'm just if you see I'm just using my needle, the, my needle point to to move this oil around a little bit, okay? And I'm gonna set him down. I'm gonna grab my spring, okay? Rehook my spring holding pressure down. We're gonna put our screw back in. Backing up to find the threads. Once you get one screw in it, you can let go of it. What's wrong with this particular model? Hey, Brandon, sorry, buddy. Um, I, 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 I was over here working. I could, the chat's on the other side. Um, so this particular model, what's wrong with it? I don't know, dude. Um, do you do CD laser mechanism repair? I do do CD laser mechanism repair. Um, I hate them because, because when, a, when a CD mechanism says that it's failing or when it, start, when it needs adjustment, that tells me, and I think uh, I think me and you've talked about it a little bit in the past. That tells me that the 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 overall mechanism is not long for this world. It's not gonna um, it's not gonna live much longer, and um, and that troubles me, you know, because 
when we crank the power up on a laser and, and adjust it to tweak it, right, you have to adjust the laser mechanism uh, with the control pot in it to give it more power. Um, and so the problem is when you do that, now you're driving something harder. So obviously you, know, you, you wanna replace capacitors and double check everything and the whole nine yards. But when you start turning the power up on, on a laser specifically, you're gonna, it's gonna burn out sooner. Um, so yes, I do fix them. Um, CD and CD drive, the laser mechanisms are not a huge big deal, but I just hate to, uh, I, I just hate to, to, to do them because that tells me it's failing. As far as the mechanisms go, they're pretty robust. So generally with the mechanisms themselves, as far as, um, and we're going to get in, I'll, as a matter of fact, I'll pull one off and show you right now. Cause we're done. We're done doing that. So let me. Let me grab this one off of the board real quick. Um, and we'll, I'll show you kind of what I'm talking about. It'll be a little bit easier. Let me just transition over. Um, let me just transition over here. So um, with your CD drive, like on this particular PlayStation one right here, right? So, and, and all of them are a little different. Um, later generations of, of CD mechanism drives, Blu-ray drives, DVD drives, things like that were a lot more complicated. But as far as the mechanisms themselves, right, there's really not much to it. Um, all you really have is you've got a motor and a gear, right, uh, here, and then you've got a motor here that is also geared, right? And then the laser control itself will run backwards and forwards. This one runs on some internal, I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's some internal plastic sliders over here. Um, and it, it's turned by, should be turned by this gear, but I can't get it to, uh, this is this is usually one of those, uh, yeah, one of those microscope jobs. So you, anyway, this motor turns a little gear that runs this slider backwards and forwards incredibly simple to work on. This motor just spins the, the seat head on it, the drive head. And then inside of here um, is, a, is an electromagnet. So you can actually just replace, if the electromagnet goes bad, and the electromagnet is what controls the eye. Um, if you guys can see that, let me switch over and put it on the big screen for you. Let me put it on the big screen for you. That's a little bit better. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, so, so the laser itself um, just works on an electromagnetic coil that runs up and down. Generally, if that goes bad, the best thing to do is just replace the whole sled, this whole unit, um, with another one. They're not keyed like later models are, and it's a pretty simple swap. There's not a lot to it. There's a switch in here that tells it when it's all the way home. This little switch right here tells it when it's run all the way against this wall. And that's really, as far as the PlayStation one specifically, there's not much to them. They're very... Uh, reliable and robust because they're very simple. The big problem that happens with these, like I said, is um, the laser itself right in here stops reading as well. Um, and so there's a control pot. There's a control pot. Give me one second. Uh, this generation, the 9000s is in a different place. But you just give me one second and I'll dial into it. Stop it. I've run it too far. So there's a control pot underneath this uh, this hat that you can just dial up and down. Yep, that you just dial up and down to turn the intensity up and down. Ow, uh, I stabbed myself with my tweezers. And it just makes the laser beam stronger. Um, so yes, now when it comes to actual replacement of the lens, that's pointless. If we get to that point, we need to replace the entire sled unit. Uh, if, the, if, the, if the main drive motor goes bad that spins the disc we just replace the motor itself there's nothing to that if this little motor here goes bad that's no big deal we replace that if these gears go bad um, which they just genuinely don't um, then that's no big deal we just replace them um, these gears uh, are by the way they're floating I don't know if you can see that in there but they kind of float a little bit so there's a little bit of given given this one that allows it some um some give if it binds up so yeah nothing to that nothing to those guys right there uh it's a pretty simple mechanism 
um, they pop out. It's this thing, whole thing comes apart. This is a very simple one to work on. But to answer your question and a little bit closer, yes, I work on them. Yes, I fix them. Uh, not a whole lot to them at all. Um, I hope that answers your question. I, I, I try to be a little bit more detailed or thorough than maybe you were specifically looking for, but that's, that's yes. Yes, I fixed them. How hard can it be? Uh, nothing to it. All right, so on this PlayStation, and to answer your question, I, again, I don't, I don't know what's wrong with this guy. I really don't. Um, I, it may work, but because it's an old console and when I pick it up and look inside of it, um, it is covered in dust and pet hair and nastiness everywhere, um, then we are going to take it apart. I've already checked for continuity on my um, on my fuse and made sure my fuse is functional and is not blown. It is not, which is a very good sign. So we're gonna get back, we're gonna get into diving a little bit deeper. The difference is in consoles, uh, by the way, uh, between like the so th even this one. So okay. So you remember the last one that we worked on um, where this switch was black, by the way, and the LED was different. Uh, it was, this is, a, this is a first generation SMD style LED, right? So they're huge, they're ginormous. Um, changing them out is a bit of a pain. Their through hole, but their surface through hole, which I know doesn't make any sense at all, um, but they are. Anyway, glossing over all of that. They have also used some really cheap, crappy capacitors in here. Um, well, I said that. But they're not very good. Anyway, we don't care. So this particular console, this generation of PlayStation consoles here, um, not only is it a little bit different than the rest of them, um, but uh, well, it's it's a revised edition, I guess, but it's also lacking some of the internal components, and it's got some extra clips to hold things down, stuff like that. So, what? Trying to decide, trying to decide on doing an ODE replacement, but on a 1001 model, keeping the CD player part would be advantageous. I agree. Um, I agree. And what I would recommend with that is... Um, Get a couple of discs uh, that you know to work, um, that you know to work well, and try them. If they work fine, then fine, right? We leave them. Um, if they don't work fine, then, you know, then we test them in another PlayStation to verify that it's the disc or the drive. If the drive is bad, like I said, the good thing is, for the most part, the uh, PlayStation 1, not PS1, PlayStation 1, these guys, the disk drives themselves are pretty interchangeable. Um, they use some different components later on, but for the most part, again, they're pretty well interchangeable. So, replacing them, swapping them is not really a big deal. So, if you guys remember the last one that we took apart over there, the board was huge, right? And it had all this extra heat shielding around it over here. We had to go and check. Compa caps were a little bit different and all that. This one does not have that same layout inside. It is significantly different. Um, this is Sony saving money. So on these types of boards specifically, uh, you wanna look right here, this PU-22, that's an important number for you to remember. Uh, if you wanna look up, um, and Brandon, this is also for you as well. Uh, so even though you've got like a 1001 or a 5000 or 7000 series, when you go to order a cap kit replacement for it, or you go to order specifically, Brandon, for like the ODE and stuff like that, um, this is the number up here and it's stamped down here on, the, on, on different boards. Some of them are up on the bottom side of it, but this PU-22, that's the number specifically you're looking for. Um, and so when you and I had talked, this is a 9,000 series. Yes, sir. Um, I'm pretty sure it was. I'm pretty, I'm, I'm, I want to say, I don't even know where I put the bottom of it at now. I got distracted, man. That happened. Yes, it's a 9,000 series. Um, 
So this one, uh, my brain went blank. I keep, look at the big copper on the bottom of it, the big copper shield. Um, at any rate, yeah. So, <coughs> excuse me, I'm still feeling kind of under the weather. <clears throat> Need to dig out storage other places, see how they compare. Yeah, so when you're going to upgrade things on a PlayStation Model 1 like this, the big gray chunky boy, right? Um, that number up there makes all the difference in the world. Uh, it is literally the difference between having a console that will work every single time uh, or work with any mod and a console that will not. Um, so what I wanna do is, I can see the power board is dirty, but it's otherwise okay. I don't see anything else living inside of it. I want to, oh, I, I, was, I was holding the bottom of the board in my hand. That's why I couldn't find it. <laughs> what an idiot. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna get the microscope out for a second. And I just want to breeze over this board um, real quick like. And we're going to be doing like a, I say a 30,000 foot view, but but it's not. Um, what I'm looking for specifically is I, I want to check around all the caps and making sure that none of them have leaked uh, of these ele electrolytic caps. I also want to look very closely at this switch, right? And this switch could use some cleaning, okay? And a switch needs a little bit of cleaning. That's no big deal. You wanna use gentle pressure when you're cleaning this switch. If you use too much pressure, you will damage the switch or you can rip the little plastic tip of it off. Uh, and that is no good. So, there we go. That doesn't look bad. I'm just checking these before I fire this guy up. I don't want to, um, the scratch on the top of that does concern me a little bit, but I don't see any leaking anywhere so far. I want to come down here and check this guy. Um, it's a little concerning, but not bad. He's fine. He's fine. We'll come on over here. He's fine. And we'll start up here on our video channels. Uh, I'm fine, fine. Is that just a hair? Yeah, it's just, just an aminal hair. Fine, 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 fine. I also want to check the linear regulator as well. That is gonna be another critical part that we go take a look at. Um, the linear re regulator on this guy, this guy right here, this IC601, this guy right there, okay? This linear regulator is also something I wanna look at. I'm looking for any sort of burn marks uh, around it or scorching. We do have some bugs, some dust and some debris. So see that little bit of browning right there? That switch was nasty, it really was. Um, I don't know, this came from a flea market, and so I talk about this quite a bit on my channel, is when you get components out of a flea market, um, chances are they're not, they're, they're gonna be, they're gonna be nasty, they really are. Uh, not a huge deal for us, we're gonna clean them up anyway. So, okay, so this, see this brown stuff right in here? This is flux, okay? Same thing up in here, up in this side, right up here, okay? See all this right in here? This is this is flux, right? Um, same thing right over in here, and then right there, that is also flux. But this particular side, you see this black right in here? We want to, this is specifically stuff we wanna look at. So we if we can just gently scratch them off like this, it's fine. But if we get something like that and we scratch at it and we start seeing silver or brass underneath it, then that means we've got some board corrosion we need to really be concerned about. The flux won't hurt the board. It won't. Um, it, it won't hurt at all. Here's some more flux over here. So you'll have big flux areas where these are run through the assembly line and they're heated up and they, they put flux on it and then they're just not cleaned all the way. 
but that's not a big deal. I don't see any broken traces anywhere. Um, I don't see any bad pins off the top of my head. I don't see anything janky looking. Um, you always want, want to look around this guy right here too and make sure you don't see any heat stress. No, we all look pretty good. I mean, other than just being dirty, which we're gonna clean that up real quick like. I don't see anything out of the ordinary, nothing. I don't see anything that should stop this from running. I don't see anything burn out. I don't see anything damaged. So this theoretically should work. Let's switch back over to the top down camera, get rid of the microscope, and we will clean this guy. Uh, and then we'll fire him up. We'll plug him up to the TV and see if he works. Might, might not, I don't know. Um, another thing, I still, still cannot find my, 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 my uh, Gran, uh, Gran Turismo game. I can't find, I have no idea where it is. And I was so excited when I got it and I put it somewhere because it was special and I didn't want to, I didn't want to damage it. I wanted to put it up and protect it because uh, it was in such great shape and I still can't find the stupid thing. I have no idea where I put it. None, no clue. Um, I say this in nearly every one of my streams. You cannot, you cannot over isopropyl alcohol this. Do not waste your money or your time with cheap 95, 91, 93% isopropyl. Buy the good stuff, it's 99%. It'll last, you know, it'll do a better cleaning job. Show you one more little quick tip. Once you're done, wash it down like this, okay? Wash it down, okay? Shake it off. That lets all of that gunk flow off of it, which is great. Come to the bottom side of it, soak him down some more. Um, I am not gonna put this on here yet, uh, yet, but going to this should work I don't see anything that would prevent this console I haven't seen anything yet that would prevent it from working so I don't know we'll see maybe it will maybe it won't it would be it would be it would be horrible for it not to work um, although I you do always kind of got to expect that you know I mean listen I got this from uh, I got this essentially from a flea market so you know I'm not saying that they are unsavory characters there. Uh, and again, and I know I go through this every time I break out the hot air gun, I am not hot airing this uh, to reflow anything. I am using this to rapidly dry the isopropyl. That's the purpose. Cool air, warm air, doesn't really matter. Doesn't really matter. Just, you just want some good airflow. I think I'm at 457, but if you notice, I'm not really sticking in any particular area right now. I'm kind of rapidly moving everywhere. That's what you want to be doing. Um, normally, and, and I'm not going to now, but normally we, we, we will go in and apply. Um, and I may clean this up and do it and show you. Matter of fact, I will. Um, I always put some thermal pads down on these and let these make contact with the with the heat sink or with this metal plate. That allows some cooling uh, on the board, which is good, right? Which is good. It allows these chips to stay a little bit cooler, which will help them in effect last longer. So. Drop that down. You're going to remove this cable. You're gonna remove this cable. Come on. I hate this stupid clip. I really, really, really hate this stupid clip. I fight with this stupid clip every single time. 
do one of these. I hate them. If you weren't aware of how I felt about that clip, now you know. So before I go connecting power to this, uh, or to the board, I guess I should say, before I go connecting power to the board, I am going to plug everything up, okay? Uh, including my disk drive. What are you doing? Sorry, my uh, stepdaughter is over there and I kept hearing this camera going, taking pictures and whatnot. I couldn't figure out what it was. Okay, so we are going to grab the power cord right here. Backside looks good clean. The top of it looks good too. I appreciate that. I, um, I, I tend to go, even though this is kind of a quick, like I'm just kind of doing it in a hurry, and I am doing this in a hurry right now. Um, I, I, I've decided that uh, I'm gonna try not to make these repair streams multiple, multiple, multiple hours long, though I mean, I will if I have to, but I'm, I'm gonna try not to. I didn't clean that port. Should have cleaned that port. Let's find out if it works. So, so far we do have a power light. That's good. We don't have any smoke coming out of it. That is also good. So at this point, we're gonna turn him back off um, and we're gonna plug this up to our main board. And we're gonna throw the switch and we're gonna put the mobile cam on screen and voila. Yeah, I kind of figured that. Um, I do want to, so so this is what I'm gonna switch over to the mobile cam, uh, and I'm switch over to the mobile cam specifically for branding. So I'm gonna zoom in here and I'm gonna throw this switch, right? So you see that motion right there? That disc is, or the, the eye was seeking up and down. So it moved back to home and stopped, that is good. And we didn't hear any additional clicks or bumps or anything like that, that's good. And then we watch the eye seek up and down, and we also watch the uh, the carriage here spin. So I'm gonna hit the switch again. See that eye moving? That is good. That tells me that the electromechanical portion of this eye is functional. Tells me this is also functional. So what I can do, what I can do is set him there I've got a disc floating around even though I know this is not the right this is a PS this is a much later PS disc okay I know that it's a PS3 disc I know that don't tell me we're gonna stick him here and I'm gonna kind of hold this up with my hand and hit the button so you see that little bump right there it's trying to read this disc Okay, and what it is realized is, nope, I can't read this disc. Now I just happen to know, because I just happen to know that this disc is incredibly dirty. So I'm gonna try to wipe it down with some isopropyl real quick. Uh, as a matter of fact, I don't even think that disc works. And I don't, I don't think that, um, I don't think that even if I clean it, I don't think that it'll read it. And because, just because, I don't have, um, I don't have any like old music CDs, which would be great if, if I had one, but I don't have one. Notice I have not cleaned the eye yet, the laser eye. And I'm not, I'm gonna save that as, if I can get it to uh, do any more than what it is currently doing, then I may clean the laser. We're just gonna give him a hold, hit our button. Yeah, it's not gonna be able to. What I might do is hit our power off, power on, immediately hit this and see what happens. No, it can't read this. And it knows it. It can't read the format 
um, that this is written in. Oh my God, before I short the board out, you get back down on there. Okay. I knew that. Um, i tell you what though, give me a second. Um, give me one second. <laughs> you need your CRT. You, just, you do, dude, you do need a CRT. So I picked this one up. They are getting outrageously expensive. Uh, they really are. They are getting very expensive and very hard to find. However, um, however, I'm sorry, I took my mic off for a second. However, while they are getting harder to come by, you can still Facebook Marketplace and find a good one. I, of course, always recommend the, the Sonys. I always recommend the Sonys. You gotta get a Sony. All right, give me one second. Let me go see if I can find another CD. I might have some. I might have some. Might have some. Might have some. Maybe. I found a bunch of uh, bunch of discs. That is High School Musical. Sing it for we. We're not. No, no, no. Rock band. Don't know what that is. Don't know what that is. I don't know what either of those are. In fact, there were some music CDs over here too. Gotta go through all of these. These were just in a pile of discs. Maybe. Maybe. Oh, wait. 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 This might actually work. This might. This is like a music CD. This is a Guns N' Roses. So we're obviously not going to um, let it play. Copyright strikes and all that. Let's see. 
Oh, there we go. So we're spinning up now. Up. Oh. So, got to find a way to set this down. So we have now changed over. So it did indeed read our disk. So, you know what I don't have over here though? Is a controller. I said I don't, but I might. Give me a second. I just might. Just wait. Wait. You guys gotta be more patient, you know? I got too many, I got too many things. I got too many things on the shelf. Let's see if the controller works, I guess, since we're here, right? You know what else we can check? You guys remember the, the last PlayStation I worked on? Let's put him up there. Oh, I'm gonna have to hold my finger. Hit play. I may have to reset it. That don't do it. Oh, my hand's right in the way. Well, I'm sorry. My hand's just gonna have to be in the way. Just gonna have to you're just gonna have to look around. You guys can't even hear me right You know what? It's not going to play any audio anyway. Sorry, I took my mic off, and now you guys can't even hear me. Jeez Louise. Jeez Louise. Okay, let's see here. Let's try this again. Oh, you know what? Before I do that, audio cable. Audio cable. Audio cable. That was an audio cable. Okay, we're back now. Okay, we gotta stop right there. That's all we can that's all we can let you hear. That's it. That's all I can let you hear. So it does it does work. That's a good thing. We can also check, we can also check the memory card status on these guys. I can't. If I play any more than that, if I play any more than that music, I'll get the copy of the old copyright strike. So it is at least functional. Let's see. Let's go up here to our memory card. Since we cleaned nothing. Hard one. Nothing, nothing on that one. Let's check this really cool one that had the window in it, that had the LED light, or the LCDs in it. Look at that. Look at that. Right? Well, it showed up for a second. Oh, look. Oh, we got all sorts of stuff on it. How do I... Is it, it doesn't have a... LCD like flickered. I don't see a button. I don't see a button. I can't, it won't come out. It is now forever stuck. It does, it's got, it's got like a LED thing, uh, LCD on it. And when I plugged it in, it lit up for a second. See, there you go. Now it's gonna show up on screen with stuff. Maybe. Now it's not showing anything. Oh wait, there, there we go, look. Look, it lit up. We're gonna have to do some work to this guy. 
because he's not working right all the way. We're gonna do some work to him. Okay, enough of all of that. So, some other things that we're gonna check while we're here. While we're here, or here. Put that guy back up there. So now that, now that we know that our console functions-ish, disk drive works, ish it does as a matter of fact we know it works because it it it, it played it played sounds and then we had to cut it off so top down view here's what else we want to do we want to start feeling around for heat okay so in the last video i showed you right to use these two fingers your thumb and your forefinger okay so this is our transformer and i'm just touching the top of it touching the top of these big caps. This big cap is a little toasty. Okay, we have a significant amount of heat coming off of this guy. But he's not bad. The next thing we wanna do is check voltage on our linear regulator. Okay, now this is an important step because even though we've gotten to this point, right? If we don't check voltage output, right? On our linear regulator, what we could end up with is over slash under volting the system, okay? So take your ground probe and go to a known ground. One of these areas right over in here somewhere is fine. Check your first leg, 7.68. Check your second leg, 5.014. Check your top side, should have nothing. Check your center leg, should have nothing. So we are getting seven volts in, 7.6. .6. We are outputting exactly 5.014. So that is exactly what it should be outputting is five volts. 5.014 5 is fine. It's fine for us. Okay. So other than that, I don't feel any heat coming off of. So now I've switched over to my pinky, right? And why are we switching over to our pinky? Uh, does anybody remember from last week why we switch it? Why we're switching over to our pinky? We checked with our hand first right we checked with fingers that have calluses on them and now we're checking with a finger we don't use much so it's going to be more sensitive to heat checking capacitors there should never be any heat on a capacitor but we're just checking because we're here now everything this side of the transformer is high voltage everything this side is low voltage Okay, so the reason I tell you that is when you're touching over here, be if anywhere from here back, you be extra, extra careful. That's 120, or if you're in Europe, that's 220. That will absolutely light you up and hurt you really badly. Everything over here is gonna be 12, seven volts, stuff like that, not a big deal. So, and I say not a big deal, it can still hurt you, but yes, more sensitive. But, but, uh, but the reason over here is, is like I said, you know, it's 12 volts. Chances are you're not going to run into anything that is going to light you up. Okay. Everything seems to be fine on it. We're going to turn it off since we work, since we work, and we're going to pull the power board, clean it properly, clean it properly. Um, we're going to clean the metal board properly cover board and then we're going to put some heat sinks on when we come back some heat sinks i say i call them heat sinks not heat sinks we're going to put some thermal pads down uh, on these guys to help transfer some heat away screw everything back down and call it a day but i have to go i have to go um take some medication real quick so give me give me five minutes and i will be right right back don't go anywhere i'll know if you went anywhere 
I do have to do some work. Great to be here and check this out. Have a great night. You too, buddy. Thanks for coming and hanging out. I appreciate it. Um, we'll see you the next time. Shoot me a message, by the way, Vernon. Shoot me a message the next time that you uh, you put a video up because I, I, I've i got my personal account and then I've got my classic console repairs account and I don't always get notifications properly. So shoot me a message. Um, I want to come by and check it out, all right? And for everybody else, I will be back here shortly. Very, very, very shortly.
Okay, 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 I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. How's everybody doing? I'm back now. I'm back now. Okay, so we are going to pre prep uh, this guy for thermal pads. And I'm going to show you the method to my madness. Um, because there is a little bit of madness in it. Um, I guess the first thing that I need to do, I guess the first thing that I need to do is, is clean the top of this guy. Um, and normally, normally I would run this through a dishwasher or not dishwasher, through a sink and some soap and all that stuff, but I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. Normally I would with a big scrubby brush, but this time, I think this time I'm just gonna lightly scrub away the gunks. Um, I, once I apply the thermal compound, or the, not the compound, the thermal pads, and I know that the board is gonna be good, um, I am gonna take this thing just like I did with the last one. You guys haven't seen that one yet, by the way. It came out, that thing came out amazing. Uh, it came out so beautiful. Uh, matter of fact, I've got it sitting over here. Let me let me grab it real quick, and I'll show it to you. I'll show it to you. Give me one second. So this was the this was the five thousand that we worked on. You guys remember how horrible it looked? Look at it now. She's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Looks great. Fantastic. This is gonna this is gonna make somebody a very happy person. This is a great little console right here. This is a very good, very good condition. Very happy with the way that one came out. Okay, so we did that side. Um, in some other news, in some other news, there is a possibility um, that I might be, and I, I, I don't know yet, I might be moving um, relatively-ish soon. Um, I'll talk about it more once I have more details. It's not set in stone yet, um, but there's some there's some possibilities and uh, some, some other stuff in the work. But at any rate, okay. So now we've got that down. So here's what we want to do. We want to take our board out. We want to unhook him. I know you guys can't see me doing it. But we want to take our board out. Okay. And we want to flip him over and set him down where he goes, which is right here. Now, if you look in the mobile cam, you want to look with this thing held down where it's supposed to be held down to proper tension and all that and we want to look down through it okay in that view and see about what the gap is between our chips okay like if you guys can see my thumb in there on it okay between that gap uh, of this metal plate and our chips see how much room we have right and it looks to me like we've got a substantial amount of room and that thermal pads may not, there's no way, there's no way, not even, not even two mil would, would touch them. Okay. That's all right. Right here though. No. No way they're gonna fit. Okay, well, never mind then. Forget I said anything. We're not gonna put thermal pads down because they're not gonna fit. So, so we're just not gonna. We're gonna drop this guy back in, put our two screws that lock him in place under the board. And then we're gonna pull the power board and clean him. If I remember correctly, it is this screw. And this screw. That seems right. 
pull our power board, we're gonna clean him. And we're gonna put him back in. Now, again, I'm cleaning all of this. Um, and while I'm gonna go ahead and clean it now, I, I am acutely aware that it's gonna have to come back apart because I'm gonna have to clean up the plastics, right? Um, and I actually, you know, I had done the one video a while ago um, that didn't come out so well about how I clean the plastics. Um, and that didn't come out so well. So this time, what I'm gonna do is re-record it and do a better video of it, okay? Sure, our ductor's good and clean. Make sure our switch is good and clean. And we want to pour a little bit of isopropyl down in the switches, right? And then actuate them a few times. And then that will be that for that. And we're gonna drop him back in, and yes, I know he's covered in isopropyl alcohol, and no, I don't care. Uh, and you shouldn't care either. You shouldn't care either. It won't hurt a thing. Um, Non-conductive-ish. Non-conductive-ish. So. but at least he'll be partially clean, mostly clean. And again, I'm gonna have to take this back apart anyway. I, I'm well aware of that because I've got to clean the plastics. And when I do, I'll do a final clean, but I want to put the, I want to put it, whenever you're working on a console, right? A vintage console, you want to be very methodical about how you go about things. Um, and this is one of those things that you want to be very methodical about how you go about it. Um, cleaning one is is one of those like you do it in a specific way um, and you do it this way for a very specific reason um, and the reason that we that I go about it the way that I am going about it right now is um, Sorry, I lost my train of thought there for a second. Bear with me and I'll catch it. Um, I lost it because I put my screwdriver down. I don't know where I put my screwdriver down at. Right there. So the, the, the way that you wanna go about this is whenever you're restoring slash repairing a, a, a retro console, a vintage console, okay? All right, um, you want to go at it from the from the perspective of, of small baby steps, right? So, for instance, perfect, this is a perfect for instance right here, what we're doing now. Perfect for instance. We took the board apart, or we took the console apart, we checked it, we found a couple of errors, we found a couple of faults, nothing major. Um, we made a couple of small little tweaks, we cleaned, and now we're going to reassemble, okay? And once we reassemble it, now we will know I don't feel like these go here, but I'm putting them in anyway. Once we reassemble it, we will know that these steps were completed. And now, and, and, and then we will know, okay, did, did, did what we 
did the steps that we took make a difference, good or bad? Um, and not every step is going to make a difference, good, good or bad. Some things may make things temporarily worse, right? So for instance, I know, I know that this still has to be recapped. I know that. Um, I know that the plastics have to be cleaned. However, what is the point? I'm, I tried to do this one from a different take than what I normally do. Um, what is the point of taking things apart before you're ready? What is the point of recapping it before you know that the console actually works, right? There is no point. And so part of me teaching you guys how to do what it is that I do is me going through every one of these steps sometimes um, so that you all know exactly what you're doing at home. So we are now at this point. Put the cover back on it. We're gonna put our screws back in it, even though I know they've gotta come back apart. And that way, if you guys are following along at home or using this as a reference at home, you know to go this particular method. Take it apart, clean up the boards, put it back together, or, you know, take it, take it apart, test it, you know, clean board A, take it apart, or, you know, then clean board B, put board B back in, test it again, blah, blah, blah. Go all the way through it, right? even though you're gonna to have to take it apart again. If you are careful with these screws, you can run them forever. I'm also gonna show you what we're gonna do with this sticker that's starting to peel up. We're gonna fix this, but it's gonna take a little bit of effort. Okay, so let's get our power cord. Plug our power cord up to the back. Let's grab our video cable. Turn our TV back on. Turn him off. Stupid thing. Shouldn't have been on to begin with. Plug our thing back up. Let's stick a memory card in it for giggles. And let's open this up. Let's put our known working, oh crud, our known working disc in it. And I'm gonna mute the sound on the TV. Or at least, oh crap. No, apparently I'm just gonna turn it off. We're gonna close it. Look at how easy that was. Look at this. Just one finger, barely, and it closes right down. Push over here, closes perfectly. If I even go over here, it's a little harder because it's, it's off the center, but if I touch it in the middle, that's what you should want right there. Perfect. Power this guy on, let's see what comes up. You guys can't see that. There you go. Let me transition over to the mobile cam so you guys can see what I see. Voila. It is working flawlessly. Memory card is not reading anything, but that's okay. Let's stick this memory card in and see if it reads it on this side. Mainly because I'm just curious. Mm. 
Now, I don't know what the deal is with this thing. I don't know. Yeah, it's just kicking us back out of the memory card thing. I think there's a problem with this memory card. That's a PS2 memory card, that won't read. Cool. So we can open him back up. You guys can see the disc spinning in there. If I move this, oh, I'll just have to pick that up. I don't know if you guys can see the counter counting. But I'm gonna have to stop it, because again, copyright strikes and all that stuff. So. Here's what we know. We know that we have a working, functional PlayStation 1. We know that it, we know that it, we know that it will read a disc. Um, we know that, we know that, uh, sorry, my brain went completely blank there. So we know we've got a working PlayStation 1. Uh, we know it accepts power properly. We know it outputs the correct power. We know that the disk drive works. We know that it's not overheating anywhere. We know that the boards and chips are good. We know the controller port works. We know what controller port works on it. We know the memory card sort of works. Um, so we might have a bad memory card reader or we might have to do more work to it. We also know that this shell is incredibly dirty and we're gonna have to do um, another video about cleaning that and, and I'll do that. I'll record that video and play it on the Wednesday or Friday stream. I'm not sure, I'll play it on one of those. Um, and then once we get this guy all cleaned up and ready to rock and roll, we'll put him back together. Uh, but at this point where we stand is, I want to dive a little bit deeper into the memory card issue because it might be the cards and it might also be the reader here. So I'm going to save that for later and I may, if I dive into it too much, I may record that and then um, spit that out in another video later on. I don't know. Um, but I have been trying to not make these videos incredibly long. I've been trying to, um, because listen, not that, not that you guys won't watch and I don't appreciate it. I do appreciate it. Um, I really do. I, I appreciate you guys coming and hanging out with me. It means the world to me, but I'm trying to make these videos a little bit, uh, less two, three, four hours long. Um, and a little bit more, you know, 30 minutes to an hour or something like that. Um, I don't mind doing the long videos. I just know that that's a lot for you guys to watch. Um, so yeah, so at any rate, I think that's um, I think that's where we're gonna leave this. There's been, so I will tell you this, there's been some big, big gaming news this week uh, already. And I say this week, so my gaming week is going to run uh, because I'm, I'm gonna do the gaming news thing on Wednesdays. By the way, leave me a comment. Let me know what you guys think about it. Um, if you don't want me to do it, I won't do it anymore. I might still do it, even if you don't like it. You might just say don't watch that one. Uh, but I might but I might not, too. I want to hear you guys' thoughts. So if you don't like it, let me know you don't like it. Um, the gaming stuff, I know that we did LSPDR, uh, LSPDFR again. Um, I have been working on it really, really a lot to get... Uh, the, the, the models loaded in and to get all the add-ons working and everything else. 
Um, and I've been doing that because I really enjoy it. Um, and I've been having fun with it. And I want to share things that I enjoy. But the next gaming stream that we do Friday, uh, we're going to do some retro games. We might be doing some Nintendo. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a Nintendo. But it might be a Sega too. But it's most likely going to be a Nintendo game. I don't know. We're going to see. I'm going to get the, uh, the, the... Because I won't be running the microscope for that one. So I'll be hooking this guy up again um, and letting him run his uh, run his magic and so you guys can see uh, live and then I'll post you know me up in the corner and stuff and you know the whole nine yards anyway uh, we're gonna do some retro games and stuff like that and I, I may have a, another video floating around in there anyway um, but enough of all of that uh, glossing over all of that stuff right there uh, that's got an S video on it I just never noticed it anyway um, yeah so Wednesday, all the, lots of big gaming news. My gaming week runs from thir Wednesday to Tuesday, not Saturday to Sunday or, or Sunday to Saturday, whatever. Mine runs because I do the stream in the middle of the week. So um, mine runs from Wednesday to Tuesday. So, But there's already been lots of stuff that's gone on this week, lots of big stuff. Um, that I am literally chomping at the teeth to talk about, um, literally, like I want to talk about it, but I, but I, I, I don't want to talk about it yet. I want to wait until I can have a stream and we can, or a thing. I, I don't know. I may do a live stream. I don't know. It depends. Um, with some of the other stuff going on, it may be a recorded video. It may not. I don't know. We're going to get there one way or the other. I, I'm not sure. Um, it'll be streamed or it'll be live, whatever. And then Friday, we're, we're going to do the gaming thing. And that other thing that I told you guys not to forget about, that word, don't forget it yet. I'm going to mention it again in this video because I feel like you may have forgotten it. Entertainment. I said it. Entertainment. Don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody. that to yourselves because I've had a lot of busy stuff going on and I haven't had the chance but I am going to do the thing where you're going to need that word to get an extra discount off yep all right that's it that's all I'm done I'm going away I'm going to bed you guys go hang out play video games spend time with your family all that good stuff Thanks for coming and watching, and as always, I will 100%, without a doubt, see you guys on the next